Hi guys, today we are making this amazing fluffy vanilla cake with buttercream icing. This is really easy to make, it's absolutely delicious and it's probably the fluffiest cake you will ever make. Now, as always, the ingredients are in the descriptions. Let's get started. We start off by mixing our dry ingredients and for that I'm going to combine the flour with my baking powder which is right here. That's about three teaspoons of baking powder. I have some vanilla sugar here. I have a quarter teaspoon of salt and I'm just going to give that a quick stir. I don't want to mix it completely, I just want the ingredients to be a little combined so that I don't have to mix too much once I add my wet ingredients. Okay, we'll set that aside. And next we are going to prepare our eggs. So for this recipe we need five large eggs and we're only going to use three of the whole eggs and two egg yolks. So let's break those up in here. Here we go. So that's ready. And in our eggs, I'm going to add the sugar. Now, as always guys, the ingredients and the exact amounts are in the description. And if you want a printable version of this recipe, of course, just visit the blog. There's a link um, and everything is lined out there clearly. So we have to whisk this until everything is nice and creamy and white and fluffy. And with a hand whisk, that can take a little bit of time. Uh, but if you have a hand mixer or a stand mixer, then of course use those. With a normal whisk, this is gonna take a lot of time. So I really <laughs> suggest you use a hand mixer for this. When you use a hand mixer or a stand mixer, it's very important that you don't mix or don't whisk at high speed. Uh, you want to keep it at a medium speed and that will keep it nice, light and fluffy. While this is resting, we're going to add our buttermilk into a small or medium sized saucepan. And if you can't get buttermilk where you are, like here where I am, uh, then you can just use normal milk and mix it with a couple of teaspoons of lemon or vinegar and let it rest for 20 to 30 minutes. And that's going to make really nice and creamy buttermilk. And we're also adding our butter here into the saucepan and we are going to set this to medium heat if you have an induction hob around 140 degrees and keep stirring until the butter melts together with the milk with the buttermilk so keep stirring and you don't want this mixture to boil you just want it to get hot so the minute it starts boiling take it off the heat or switch off the heat and then we go to the next step of mixing the ingredients. Okay, so the next step we have to do is to temper the eggs. Uh, tempering the eggs means we slowly introduce the hot liquid so that the eggs don't curl or that we don't get those lumpy little bits. So I'm gonna need this bowl for this one. So I'm just gonna flip this around here quickly and let's set this here aside okay and we're gonna pour this hot liquid in here so this is hot but not boiling and then we're gonna take one scoop of our eggs mixture a one cup of our egg mixture like this and we're gonna pour it into the hot mix while constantly whisking it's really important that you keep whisking as we pour this in uh, if you don't, the egg will curdle. So, whisk, 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 and then pour in the egg mix. And now this is tempered. So it's hot, but the egg didn't curl. And now we pour this mixture into our main bowl while constantly whisking. Whisk, whisk, whisk. 
Perfect. You can see it's really nice and creamy and liquidy. And now we introduce all the dry ingredients, yeah? So let's set this one here aside. And I like to start off by spreading a little bit of the mixture over the top here. Don't add it all at once because that will create clumps. I got three tablespoons and then mix this in. Now, every time we want to make a fluffy cake and we have flour, we don't want to overmix. Overmixing means gluten, and the more gluten you have in your cake, the, um, the tougher the cake is and the, the chewier the, the dough becomes. Gluten is like a, a, a net, a grid that holds the dough together. And the more you whisk flour in liquid, uh, the more of gluten you produce. So we'll go easy, we don't overmix, we just want to combine and we slowly add all the flour. Now since this is the fluffiest vanilla cake ever, um, I added two different types of vanilla into this. So if you saw in the beginning, when we mixed in uh, the dry ingredients, we first mixed in the vanilla sugar, but I have another teaspoon of vanilla extract ready as well, which I'm gonna mix in here. So now that this is nice and well combined, I'm adding in my vanilla extract. And I'm also adding in three tablespoon of uh, vegetable oil. And that's gonna make the, uh, the sponge really nice and moist, and it will also keep it fresh for much longer. Now, if you have vanilla pods, then I always suggest using vanilla pods. Vanilla pods just taste a million times better than any other uh, vanilla extract or um, vanilla sugar. But I couldn't get any in my local supermarket, so we'll have to make do today with vanilla sugar and vanilla extract. Here I have two aluminium PME forms, and these are eight inches in diameter, and we're gonna split the dough evenly between those two. Now, this dough will raise quite a lot, so don't worry if it looks like there isn't a lot in your form. It's really gonna end up being a proper size cake. And before I pop this in the oven, we have the last secret step, and that's the baking belts. So I have my baking belts here, and they've been soaking in water for the last 20 minutes. Uh, the material needs to soak, it doesn't absorb the water right away. So don't just make them wet, really put them into a bowl, let them soak up, and then you'll feel they're really nice and heavy and wet. And then just squeeze them out a little bit just so that the water doesn't drip all over the place. And then strap these around your cake pan. Put them on just like a normal belt. There we go. Number one. And number two. Okay, that's ready. We're just gonna give it a quick bang just to get any big air bubbles out and make sure the pan is completely filled. And now I'm gonna pop these in the oven and let them bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. It always depends on your oven, of course. I'm using a convection oven, and the best way to know that your cake is ready is, of course, always using a wooden skewer, stick it in the middle, and if it comes out clean, then your cake is ready. Don't overbake, and I'll see you right as this is ready. Now while the cake is baking in the oven, we're gonna prepare our buttercream icing. And for that, we're gonna need the powdered sugar, we're gonna need some butter, and some vanilla sugar, which is right here. Now, as I said before, the ingredients are in the description. And first of all, we start by adding our butter into the mixer, together with the vanilla sugar. And then we set that at a medium speed until it's nice and creamed.
Now that the butter is creamy, we're gonna start adding in our powdered sugar. And we do that a few spoons at a time. Now this is gonna dust up with powder everywhere. So if you have one of those plastic cups to put on top of this, then do that now. Okay, here we go, medium speed. And the only reason we're adding the powdered sugar slowly is because we don't want um, the powdered sugar to go all over the place. It's so fine. I mean, it's just gonna be dusty everywhere and full of powdered sugar. So go slow. And then once it's combined, we can speed it up. Okay, and that's the final amount. We're gonna have to let this cream for six to seven minutes. Make sure you scrape the bowl so we have nothing stuck on the, on the sides. And then whisk again. Butter cream is ready. How easy is that? Super easy, super tasty, and full of fluffy vanilla. Now let's have a look at the texture. So this is the kind of texture you want to achieve. Nice, creamy, thick, and fluffy and white. Now we're gonna set this aside. Let's just scrape the bowl here a little bit. So we'll set this aside, and let's see what happened to the sponge cake in the oven. So the sponge cake is ready and we have to let it cool. So before we do that, we'll have to take off our baking belt. And um, I talked about this in my previous videos, but these are a really, really good investment. So if you can get a baking belt, uh, they will really give you a nice and even bake. So you won't get that domed top. And also the crust on the outside of your cake is not going to be crispy. It's gonna be spongy all the way through. So if you can get one of these belts or two of these belts, they're definitely worth having and they're a great match with these aluminium pans. So let's set those aside. And we, before we can put any buttercream on the cake, we need to let them cool completely. So they have to be absolute room temperature, not even warm. And the best way to cool them is by using um, something like this. This is just a cooling rack and you can get them very easily. They're quite cheap and inexpensive, but they will make a massive difference because they will let your cake breathe while it cool and not make the cake soggy. So let's get it out of the pan. We'll take a blunt knife and just slowly trace the edges. We don't want to scratch the pan. We just want to loosen it. It should come out pretty easy if you have greased your pan, which I think I actually forgot, but it should come out anyway. Here we go, perfectly nice and soft sponge cake. And you can really see the difference that the belts make. You see, you have no crispy edges. It's really nice and spongy. You can see it's like bouncing back when you touch it and it's really nice and light and fluffy. So let's put this on here and let it cool. And then once we are at room temperature, we're gonna put on the icing. So I'll see you in a minute. All right guys, so the sponge cake has cooled down and it's ready for leveling before we start icing. I've already leveled one of them, but I'll show you how to do this at home, of course, as well. So first of all, you have to make sure that the cake is completely cooled down. So you don't want to do this when it's warm, otherwise it might break. And you can see it turned out really, really nice and spongy and we are ready to level. Now, there's various ways you can do this. So either you can use one of these tools here and you can find them 
um, you know, on Amazon or in any bakery shop. It's basically like a little saw that will help you level the cake exactly. So they have little notches here and you can choose how high or how tall you want to cut the cake. And then you just simply go through and cut the cake. I'll show you how that's done. If you have a bit of practice, you can use a bread knife. So one of these, like a really big and long one that will cut all the way through and you can just slowly go around and cut it evenly. So this here, if you're starting off, is definitely the easiest way. Uh, you can hardly go wrong because obviously the distance is set and you can't really make a mistake. So we'll just set that and I'll show you how to use this. Okay, make sure you're on the same notch on both sides so you can count them. We have six on this side and seven on this, so we wanna put it down by one. And now we have six on each side, which means we're evenly high. And I'm doing this exactly on the corner where the dome starts, because the point of this whole exercise is just really to make the cake completely flat, that when you ice it, it looks like nice and perfectly flat. So let's get some space, move this out of the way, and let's get started. So align it on the edge, and then give it a little bit of a nudge so that you can cut into the edge. I'll, I'll help it out a little bit. I'll just go along here. Here we go, now I'm in. And now, in a sole kind of motion, just cut through the dome of the cake, zigzag through it, and use one hand to hold it together so it doesn't break off on the top. The top is off and flat, and this is perfect for munching. So we'll just set that aside. And I'm gonna level it a bit more because I can see here it didn't go in all the way. So I'll just level this a little bit more here. There we go, and that's perfect. Okay, and next we're gonna start with the icing. And before we can actually put on the final icing, we're gonna put a crumb coat on the cake. And a crumb coat is basically a very thin layer of buttercream that we're gonna put in the fridge and let's set. And that way all the crumbs get locked into the cake. And when I put on my final icing, it's not going to be crumbly and it won't, it won't get mixed up with the crumbs. We're just nice and clear icing. So let's do that first. Uh, let's set this one here aside. And now we're gonna put on a crumb coat on the bottom layer. So we'll actually have to add the middle layer as well because that will be locked into the crumb coat. And I'm adding about three uh, tablespoons of, of our bar cream. Now that I've added an approximate level layer, I'm going to use my bench scraper to flatten it. And if you have one of these turntables, then it, it makes it really a ton easier. You can get it done as pretty closely without the turntable, but it's a really, really good investment because it makes it just so much easier. If you bake a lot of cake, definitely worth having. So get a bench scraper and point it at the middle of the cake all the way out to the side and then stabilize it onto your body so that you can get a nice stable motion or a nice stable um, hand. And then angle that a little bit and then just turn the table. And then we'll do one big motion just to get the final soft edge. See, and this is how you get your layer to be really nice and even. So now we'll pop the second layer on top and to get it super level on the top, we're gonna do that upside down because the bottom was baked in the pan and that's really super level. And if we put it up upside down, then we have a super nice edge on the top. Perfect, so here we go. Our cake sandwich is ready. And now we apply the crumb coat. So, as I said, we just want a very thin layer of cream. We don't want, this is not the final decoration layer. This is really just to lock in all the breadcrumbs. And I'm really going to like scrape it off. See, I'm just applying a little bit of cream and then I scrape it off.
that's nice and even. I'm just gonna give it a final scrape just to get any excess uh, buttercream off. And then one more on the top just to flatten it. And that's our crumb layer finished. We're gonna pop this in the fridge for like 15 to 20 minutes just to let the crumb layer settle. And then once it's settled, we can add our final buttercream, which is gonna be the decoration. We got the cream on, and this actually looks good already. You wouldn't even have to do that if you didn't want to. But we are going to use this little um, uh, scraper here with the teeth on to give it a little bit of a design. So what we'll do, just as we did with the previous coat, angle your arm against your body so that you're nice and stable. At an angle, just put it on the side of your cake, and then, just run the turntable through it to get the nice design. Here we go. And we'll do the same on the top. And for the top, we have a bit more of a trick. Try and find the center of the cake and use the first tooth of your scraper right in the center. And that way you're gonna get a nice, even design. Put it in the middle. And go right through. And this is how you make the most amazing fluffy vanilla cake. It's really, really easy to make. Now, as I said before, the ingredients are in the description and I can't cut this specific cake because it's actually being auctioned off for a local cat charity. But if you wanna see how this cake does look in the inside, make sure you check out the link to the blog, My Urban Treats, and you can see everything in all detail on the blog. Thank you for watching. My name is Roman. We'll see you in the next video.